I am Theo Brown, the Public Relations Officer for Caribbean Equality Project, based here in New York City. My journey to accepting everything about me, everything that I am as a queer Jamaican, born and bred and raised, and everything, you know, regarding my upbringing, it's, uh, it's been one of turmoil, it's been one of uh, fear, it's been one of uh, working towards uh, becoming a true accepting person of myself first before anyone else could really see the true person that Theo is. Being raised by a Jamaican mother, very pious, you know, very leaning towards Christianity, leaning on the power of God, you know, as many Christians tend to do in many situations. It was a very strict household in terms of having Christian principles and uh, you know, there were certain things that you couldn't do and certain things that you could do. That was, that was way back in the 90s, before I even hit teenage years, before any thoughts of puberty or any development happened where I started to align with sexuality, understanding what sexual orientation is, and really finding out that, you know, I'm attracted to the same sex and that will be a problem for the society I was being raised in. This year will officially make 16 years I've been in this country. So uh, my journey started in August 2005 when I came to the U.S. as a student on a, on a student visa. The years went by, you know, student, uh, did my undergraduate degrees in uh, three years, double major in three years. You know, I was able to graduate, use the work permit. The, back then it was called the OPT option where you could graduate, have a work permit, and then from there, you'd either go back into school on a student visa, you know, do what you needed to do in order to acquire your papers, you know, become, you maintain documented status, or, you know, figure it out. Do something to figure it out, because that's what the immigration system in this country basically does, it, to tell you, figure it out. And there was a period of time between 010 and 012 where I became undocumented because I had fallen out of student status and uh, I was just there in limbo, in that limbo that many immigrants find themselves either when they come here through legal or other means. And, uh, you know, sometimes we do find ourselves in limbo trying to get from point A to point P, if you want to, you know, be more expressive like that, because it's a long process. Living under the Obama administration was a blessing for me because I was able to take part in the DACA program that he had launched and spearheaded during both his terms. Working with the Caribbean Equality Project, we will do a lot of activism work, and that includes you know, getting the right people into offices. My journey to CEP started with me moving to New York City in fall 2013. With working with the Caribbean Equality Project, with the civic engagement aspect that we have, led by our team member Ramdad Singh. We have launched into a space uh, where we're advocating for more participation by our queer Caribbean voices. And uh, showing up and having a space at the table and, have, and using that space to advocate for what we want as a community. So I went to Georgia, I was sponsored for the trip, spent a week door knocking, mostly door knocking at this point in time, because I spent the entire 2020 text banking and phone banking. So at this point in time, only physical work, masked, masked up, gloves, whatever we had to do. We were out there door knocking, talking to folks on the ground in Georgia, especially in the key parts of the state where we needed that black and brown turnout to push the needle to the political spectrum that would benefit us the most as a community. We were successful in the end. You know, Georgia remained blue, it split blue for the presidential, and it remained blue so that uh, the control for the Senate, even though it's a thin, razor thin majority, is at least uh, intact for right now. So we were successful on those fronts. Love and resilience for me looks like showing up as my true self, showing up first and foremost, in an America that keeps uh, challenging the skin color I am. And then once it challenges my blackness, it then challenges my queerness. It then challenges my immigrant status. It then challenges my educational status. It then challenges my worth and my equity and my value. Those challenges lead me to live and love pridefully because it keeps me grounded to remember that my existence 
I'm here for a reason. And uh, whether it be to motivate somebody else by sharing my story, whether it be to speak my truth, whether it be to help with my community organizations and my advocacy avenues to continue working as CEP's public relations officer to you know, make sure that the organization is out there fo first and foremost and just on the front lines as we always are, helping and serving our community. That's what living and loving pridefully means for me, to show up and to be the best Theo that I can be.